Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So this is my review for The Mandalorian Season 2, Episode 5, titled The Jedi. Now, I was looking forward to this episode a lot because it was going to be our first look at Ahsoka Tana Rosario Dawson playing the animated uh, character which has a, a huge popularity through the Clone Wars. And of course, David Filoni, he was directing this episode. And so, yeah, I think he did a pretty good job. And of course, he was over all the animated shows as well. And Ahsoka is one of his main characters and a character that he really loves. But overall, this episode was a lot of fun. Probably my second favorite episode this season. A lot of cool dialogue, some references to old movies, some of the animated shows as well. And I think it really set up something really great for the last five episodes the last three episodes of this season it's not ten it's eight episodes isn't it that, that's what they did last season so yeah there's not there's not too much left to go six seven and eight and the story you can feel is really uh gaining momentum um my prediction is that baby yoda will be taken by the end of the season that's my prediction that's what i think was going to happen but so much stuff dropped here and the first scene where we get to see ahsoka take down some bad guys per se with her, her lightsaber was pretty cool now I did think some of the action that was the way that was shot was a little off. I didn't really like the way she was holding the lightsaber and doing the action scenes. But I think it was like that because they wanted to have a certain kind of mystery to the start of the episode. Well, oh, what kind of character is this? They didn't want to show straight away that it was Ahsoka. But as this, the show goes on, as the episode goes on, we get more action scenes with Ahsoka. Then it's done a lot better. And I think, yeah, it, they, they got the hang of it. It was just done for an effect to keep mystery. So Mando... He comes to this planet, he wants to find Jedi's, that's his whole plan, He hopefully he can find somewhere for Baby Yoda to go, to get training, to be protected, be with its kind, or the Jedi's, or something like that, and he com comes across Ahsoka, but before that he comes to this community, which seems to be well guarded, and kind of a dictatorship going on by this character here, and she isn't too nice, she has people kind of as prisoners, being tortured, the town is in lockdown, people do, is they can't even talk to each other and stuff like that, so it's a pretty weird scenario in a weird town, and yeah, Michael Bain was in this car in this show, in the episode as well, and I didn't even know it was him on my first watching, to be honest, and Michael Bain, of course, from Terminator 1, is one of these actors who probably should be a huge star, but it never really worked out for him in that aspect, but it's great to see him in such a high-profile show now, like The Mandalorian, and there was even some references to his old movies in some of the dialogue that he was doing, I wish he did more, I wish he had more of an action scene against, against Mando near the end of the episode but overall it was pretty cool to see him uh, an iconic kind of a character actor in this show but yeah so Ahsoka and Mando they meet each other it looks like they're about to fight straight away uh, when Mando Mando is actually I should say is given the task of killing the Jedi to get something in return he goes out but he's never really going to kill uh, Ahsoka he just wanted to go find her and find out information and yeah so they meet uh, he explains to her about baby Yoda that we need to find a place that the Jedi's will care for him or somebody to train him or something because he has a lot of power and he's being hunted by the Empire and Moff Gideon of course they all want Want him the M count all that kind of stuff so he needs to be protected at all costs and we get some cool references that Ahsoka drops about Anakin Skywalker she didn't say his name uh, directly but you could definitely th know that she was talking about him in terms of like the power being too much and like that things like that so that was pretty cool uh, also we got some Yoda references some references to the Clone Wars that was pretty cool and I'm sure if you're a fan of that of that show and of course of the original movies and the prequels, you'll be fanboying it out straight away about this episode because of the cool easter eggs and references that were dropped by Rosario Dawson's character. We see a cool little scenario and encounter with uh, Baby Yoda and Ahsoka where there's actually just silence for about maybe a minute in the, in the scene. Uh, they don't speak whatsoever. You can see that they're connecting through the Force. They're talking, communicating through the Force, which was pretty cool. And I'm sure in that moment, Baby Yoda was telling Ahsoka absolutely everything that has happened with Mando and that Mando is kind of like a father figure to the child to Baby Yoda and we find out that Baby Yoda's name isn't Baby Yoda it's Grugo pretty interesting name what do you prefer I'm sure Baby Yoda is still going to be the name that people will talk about and that's what's going to trend online it's going to be very hard to change that name now and I'm sure they'll keep on the merchandise and the selling the toys they'll keep Baby Yoda because Grugo doesn't really have that kind of I don't know, marketing appeal? Maybe it will, I don't know, but I, uh, it's going to be hard for me to change my ways and ch hard for Mando to even change his ways. He was still calling it the kid or the child as well instead of Grugu. But yeah, it was cool to find out Baby Yoda's real name. And yeah, and Ahsoka points out that there's a big connection between Mando and Baby Yoda and that Baby Yoda has so much power, but it's hard to bring it out and it's been shielded because he was a part of the temple. He was at the temple that was overrun. Uh, there was probably many 
the Jedi is there training as well, but the Empire came there, probably Anakin Skywalker maybe, as Darth Vader, if that lines up with the timeline, um, came in, killed some Jedis, were killing the people, but they smuggled Baby Yoda out of the of the, of the the temple, and yeah, that's how he got away, and now that's why Mando kind of has the child, and they're all coming back full circle, because the temple was dropped again here, near the end of the episode, but, but yeah, that was a cool interaction between those three characters, and then Mando was the one that was able to get Baby Yoda to use the Force by... Uh, um, levitating the kind of knob the of the of the ship which was cool as well so you see there's a deep connection and baby yoda is probably going to use his powers a lot if ever mando was in danger or ever mando needs it so that's pretty cool and maybe the only way for baby yoda to actually use their powers is when mando is around or is in danger which i think is pretty cool as well and it's cool that mando or baby yoda i should say is so kind of joyful and fun as a character even though they've gone through so much they have kind of a trauma that's gone on with the temple being overrun and then being hunted down but the child is still able to have fun still able to cause chaos whether it's eating eggs or breaking things off the ship and the connection between mando and the child is pretty special and i actually love it so much and I, if they ever end up splitting these two characters up i don't know how much interest there will be in the show i do not think this show works if these characters aren't together, that's just my opinion. I think these characters need to be together for how long this show goes on. If it's three, four, five seasons, I think you can have short periods where they're not together, but for a season or one character without the other, for me, I just don't think it works whatsoever. So I hope the characters end up staying together and Mando continues being a father for Baby Yoda. But Ahsoka agrees to train the child. She will train him in the Jedi way if Mando helps her help the town that's being on lockdown per se they're in their own kind of coronavirus lockdown uh, where they can't really do anything only work but yeah it's pretty cool that the uh, mando agrees so every episode has been the same mando agrees to help someone in exchange for some information or something this episode is pretty similar he, he agrees to help ahsoka help this town in return she'll take baby yoda train him mind him and all that stuff so they go to the town and it's a pretty cool action sequence that we get to see um rosario dawson's lightsaber action at the start of the episode i didn't think it was that great but i think that was for the mystery aspect but as the episode went on with more action scenes it's absolutely brilliant and i love it and especially the final fight scene which has a lot of kind of a samurai uh, old movies vibes to it and even kill bill and you can see feloni maybe taking something from those uh, movies and i think george lucas was a big fan of those samurai movies as well so yeah I, I really like that I, i'm a sucker for a good lightsaber uh, fight i don't think we get enough of them in, in the star wars universe and live action you know the one with Darth Maul, brilliant in the sequel trilogy there wasn't that there wasn't that many that really got me out of my seat maybe the one with ray snoke and, and kylo ren that was probably my favorite but then the one with Darth vader and rogue one was absolutely brilliant as well but i think we need to get more of those stuff and rosario dawson for me i love her as an actress beautiful woman but also very good in this role i don't know if this is eyeing towards a spin off there was hints because she's hunting for someone else as well there's hints that there might be a spin-off i don't know if they actually will go that direction maybe have her pop up in another show if they did a spin-off or something like that but yeah they they get the they get out of town safe enough the people of course are in celebration that mando and ahsoka were able to help them get free of this kind of um hole that was on them as a town which was good as well and yeah so but then at the end of the episode everything thinks everyone thinks it's going to be done you know uh, ahsoka will be the one who trains yoda but she doesn't want to and you can see that she has that trauma that kind of guilt of anakin she doesn't want to train someone so powerful in case it happens again where anakin turned to the dark side and became darth vader and that could possibly happen with baby yoda she says to mando bring baby yoda to bring the child bring gogo to the top of the temple and let him decide his own fate so that's pretty interesting i'm sure baby yoda will pick the fate uh which is good uh but i i think if anything was to happen to mando if something bad was to happen to mando if the if the so-called good side of the force hurt mando in any way would baby yoda turn would it lead him to the dark side i think that's a huge possibility so there's no guarantee that baby yoda will be good or bad in this universe of star wars but i think a lot of it has to do with how mando leaves if mando dies if mando is killed in what capacity it depends who kills mando or how he dies could have a lot to do with baby yoda's fate in this star wars universe whether they choose the the good side or the bad side per se which side will they choose but the character of baby yoda has so much power 
which character and also Ahsoka dropped that bring him to the temple let him show his own fate and maybe be able to connect with another Jedi and they will come lots of hints is it Luke Skywalker I don't think so I think that casting would have been out there maybe it's Ezra from the animated shows as well but it's exciting stuff and this episode for me my second favorite of the season so far and I want to give David Filoni a, a, a lot of praise here because this is his third episode that he's directed in the Mandalorian series. Two in season one and his first one of this season. And he's doing a pretty good job. And you can tell he's improving episode by episode. because He's used to doing animated features. And it's very hard to make that transition to live action. And I think he even said that in the Mandalorian uh, Disney Plus uh, behind the scenes show that they did as well. He was nervous. He didn't know really what to do. But John Favreau helped him. And it's good that he has these people around him. But this would have been an easy episode for him to have his character character as Soko be the highlight of this episode to be the main highlight the main, the main star of this episode and overshadow baby Yoda and Mando but he didn't do that he used the Soko in the right capacity that it didn't overshadow those two leads and he did it in a very good way and I have a lot of respect for him because it would have been easy for him to say oh this is my character this is the character I created this is the character that everyone would have loved they should have did a live action version of this character years ago and I should have been involved puff puff my chest is out things like that but he didn't he used the character in the right way and I think for a lot of the animated show characters Bo-Katan Boba Fett they're being used in a really really good capacity where they're not overshadowing Mando and Baby Yoda because remember the show is called The Mandalorian but I love how the show is tying all of universes together all Star Wars the old ones the prequels the newer versions of it well I love how it connects absolutely everything I think Favreau and Filoni are doing a pretty good job because they're being respectful to George Lucas something that I think the sequel trilogy wasn't really and they're also being respectful to the prequel trilogy they're being respectful to the Disney trilogy as well by tying everything in but also in some scenarios where things didn't go that well whether it be from the prequels whether it be from the sequel trilogy it looks like they're trying to have a a, a certain kind of meaning to those films and those uh, scenarios by addressing them in the show is that Snoke's clone maybe it is and that gives an extra bit of background to that movie The Last Jedi and maybe helps propel that as a story so I think Favreau and Filoni are doing an amazing job so far this season and I'm really enjoying everything that we've seen and for somebody who isn't a diehard Star Wars fan I keep saying this but slowly but surely this show is turning me into one I'm fascinated by the lore the background to each character the books the games the movies, the shows, I'm being more fascinated by the world that's being created and the Mandalorian show for me is, as I said in my stream yesterday, is fan service at its absolute best. This is how you do fan service without throwing it in the face of the fans. The Rise of Skywalker for me was throwing it in the face, trying to get fans to like this sequel trilogy, but it didn't do it. The Mandalorian is doing it in a very fascinating way where it's adding to the flow of the story. You feel depth for the characters and you feel like it has meaning when these things are dropped. When, when references are made of Anakin Skywalker or Baby Yoda, I think it's, they're doing an absolutely brilliant job and long may it continue. But as always guys, I'm interested to hear your thoughts about this episode of Season 2, Episode 5, Chapter 13, I think, uh, The the Jedi. Uh, very fascinating episode, I really enjoyed it. I'd love to see Azoria Dawson come back to the role of Ahsoka uh, Tana. Uh, I'd love to see the dynamic uh, between these three characters again. And hopefully next week's episode, the last three episodes, have something pretty fascinating for us fans. Guys, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Give the like as well. Get in the comments and let me know your thoughts. Also, guys, I have a new movie podcast, The Movie Buffs, which is, uh, you'll find the, the link to that in the description. We're going to be interviewing Fabian Wagner tomorrow, uh, the cinematographer of Zack Snyder's Justice League of Game of Thrones. You definitely don't want to miss that, so hit the subscription button there so you get to see that interview live tomorrow evening. And also, guys, I'm doing these kind of live streams as well the viking stream where i talk about a certain topic and also you guys send in your questions for the viking stream you can send them to me through facebook instagram twitter whatever you want or in the comments of these videos and say this is for the viking stream and have a question or a discussion something that you want to get off your chest something you want to talk about i won't judge it i'll read it out and we can discuss it live in the video so if you have any questions movie tv anything put them towards me or if you have any discussions that you want to bring forward or anything like that that would be brilliant guys but guys thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your weekend and it's nearly christmas so yeah a lot of stuff to enjoy and a lot of family time to come up